A funny thing happened as I began preparing this sermon earlier in the week. I thought I was going to talk about Mary's visitation to her cousin Elizabeth. I wanted to focus on this young teen who had found herself with child. While her faith was great that God was involved in this miracle of new life, her reaction to the news was to take off for the hills in haste. And for good reason. She was in danger of public censure, repudiation by Joseph, and possibly even stoning. Then the billboard went up. Suddenly, I could fully identify with Mary. For a moment, I thought of taking to the hills in haste myself. Stoning doesn't appeal to me any more than it did to her. But as you can see, Glenn and I are still here, still processing what has been an unprecedented week in our lives, in the life of St. Matthew's, and perhaps even Christmas itself. Who would have thought our little bit of irreverent Kiwi humor would have gotten such a reaction? Let me give you a little taste of what it means to go viral in an internet age. If you use the keywords St. Matthew, the plus sign billboard, plus sign Christmas this morning, you will get 56,300 hits. And that's 5,000 more than yesterday morning. Glenn and I have lost count of the number of interviews we have done for newspapers, radio, TV, and online news sources from around the world. And they haven't stopped. From the time it went up until this morning, our website was visited by 20,322 people from six continents and 127 countries. Out of curiosity, I looked up Italy. There have been 101 visits. I'm wondering if one of them's the Pope. <laughs> and it isn't slowing down much. Our podcast, iGod, has jumped to second in its category, and 109 overall out of the thousands on the site. I personally have received over 600 emails and counting. And I'm sure Glenn has received many more. Now, mine have run the gamut from pretty abusive to harshly critical to gently remonstrative to stunning, uh, stunningly pleased to outright laudatory. I was relieved that there were more supportive ones than ones questioning my mother's marital status when I was born. Then there have been the many phone calls and texts that Glenn, the entire staff team, and I have had to feel. In this day and age, there are way too many ways to communicate with someone. But whether or not people appreciated our approach one thing is certain, for a big part of the planet, people have been discussing Christmas outside the frame of Santa and shopping. And I dare say they now know about St. Matthew in the city and progressive Christianity. So Glenn and I have decided we need to take some time this morning to reflect with you on the experience. Certainly, we are not the only ones here this has impacted. We imagine that you have not been able to escape the fact that you worship here with your family and friends or coworkers. So we will open this up to you as well to share your experiences and reflections. So I'm going to come down from on high, join Glenn down here, and Glenn has had a uh, great deal of practice in interviews, and, uh, but he hasn't had one in about 12 hours, so, so he doesn't lose his groove. I'm going to interview him, 
And then I'm going to share a few comments of, of my own. And then we're going to invite you to come forward. Now, normally we'd take the mic out to you, but this is going to go on the web. So we're not, we don't want you to be nervous that somehow your image will be up there against your will. So uh, we'll ask you if you'd like to make some comments or ask questions or whatever to come forward to us when that time comes. So we. Well, Glenn, how's your sense of humor holding up? Uh, uh, quite well, thank you. <laughs> uh, is it going to carry over into the next billboard? Um, the next billboard will be different than this one. Less funny? Um, depends on your sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting quite practiced at these political kind of answers, too. <laughs> Like, so, uh, do you disagree with your bishop sort of questions? Yeah. Yes. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> so what possessed you to approve this billboard when uh, I presented it to you? I think there are five reasons, really. Firstly... I wanted people to talk about Christmas, not Santa and all the rest. I wanted people to talk about what they thought was the nature of God and the nature of the virgin birth. Secondly, I wanted to say there are lots of different views among Christians about the nature of God and the virgin birth. There's not just my view and a very crude, literalistic view that we lampooned. There are actually many views. Thirdly, I wanted to say something about my view, my progressive view, which is that Jesus had two human parents and that God was the power of love in his life, power of love in his mother's life. And when I say the word son of God, I mean that he radiated that power of love of God. And when his disciples saw him, they saw something of God. Fourthly, I wanted to lapoon a very literalistic view of the virgin birth, i.e. a male God who mated with Mary and produced a son. And whether most Christians don't believe that crude view, that is how often popular culture sees it when we use the words virgin birth. And fifthly, I wanted to send a message out to people who are on the edge of the church or way outside the church and say, if you want to think differently about God, you don't have to believe in literalism. There are Christians inside the church. There's room in the inn of Christianity, even if it's with us out round the back. Well, did we achieve the goals? Um, yes. <laughs> I think, you know, there's some lovely stories coming. People who disagree with the billboard said, well, you know, someone came along to work and this person's writing from the UK or Canada or Argentina. And they said, you know, I came along to work and showed this picture and, and, and um, said, what do you think of this? And somebody said, oh, that's terrible. And someone else said this. And suddenly they got talking. And they were talking about Jesus and God and their beliefs. And we, somehow these conversations have ignited all around the world. And for that, I'm very grateful. Um, other things, well... Um, yes, I think some people have heard the message that uh, there are other views of Christmas. Um, and as we've gone on, particularly on talk show radio, Lindsay Freer and I were on a talk back thing on the BBC in England, and certainly people were ringing in and getting a much broader taste that there wasn't just, you know, Glynn's view and a, a literalistic view, there's all sorts of views, and Lindsay could put forward what she understood by sort of central Catholic view, and I thought that debate was very good indeed. In terms of um, uh, getting people to laugh, yes, we've got a lot of people to laugh, but I suppose the most precious one is the people who are on the periphery or outside the church who say, hey, there might be space here for me. And we've had a lot of feedback, a lot of calls. I've had people come up and said, you know, I'm an Anglican, and today I feel really proud to be an Anglican. And, I mean, there's just lots of stories like this. You know, after I came home, after being on the news last night, um, 
my 10-year-old daughter said to me, you know, Dad, about you not believing God's a man, I think that's good news for girls. <laughs> I thought, yeah, th these are precious things, very precious things. Uh, there have been numerous emails that have suggested you and I are the spawn of Satan and an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. That's one of the nicer ones. Um, and their objection is that how can a church be offensive? Any thoughts on that? There is quite a lot of debate around this because in a sense, the thing that we offended against in Anglicana was one of the golden rules, thou shalt not offend anyone. And that's the primary crime in terms of the Anglican denomination. And I've just said, well, we don't do bland, we do do edgy. Um, this is the first billboard we've used sexual innuendo. Usually I stay away from sexual innuendo. People can get it really wrong, really big time wrong. But it sells. <laughs> <laughs> Who brought him on on this? <laughs> um, Sorry, Claire, am I answering your question? Probably not. Yeah, you're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question again? About uh, being a, can a church be offensive? Yes, I think it can be. It needs to be careful about that. It needs to always say there is lots of room for different opinions, and my view, our view, is not necessarily right, but let's talk about, let's, let's go on a journey together towards the truth of God in Jesus. Thank you very much for being with us today and yeah. answering our questions in this interview. Yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. I should just, just say one more thing about um, the people that, who tore down the billboard. There was four different attacks on the billboard. I understand that. I understand political protests. If I'd been here in 1981, I probably would have been part of the group tearing down the fence to get onto the pitch at Hamilton. Okay, I understand about that thing. What is more difficult is the is the really vitriolic hate mail. And that's a sort of a weird thing. It's almost like under the big umbrella of Christianity, there's these little pockets here and there. And I don't think it's the people tearing down the billboard, but, but it's out there, a really sort of ugly side of Christianity. Just a couple uh, thoughts for me on all of this. Um, Shall I? I'll go and sit back down. No, it's only, oh. they're very brief. You're going to have to stay <laughs> up here. <laughs> One, I want to thank you all as well for your support. Uh, we really did get a lot of letters from people, not only here and from you and calls, but from around the world, every country. Just amazing. Uh, and for, I mean, one of my favorites was a guy who does the publicity f for the Mormons who thinks our billboards are wonderful and wants to begin a dialogue. So, and I've heard from lots of Catholics who loved it. And, you know, so while the media has fueled the, uh, uh, those who are disgruntled, I'm grateful to them because the disgruntled have fueled the billboard. If they hadn't gotten so upset, this would have died over in a few hours. Um, but let me tell you about uh, one outcome of this. I got a call from a woman who was concerned for her daughter. Her daughter is 18, um, is beginning to ask a lot of spiritual questions, but she, this mother is a single mom, um, has been trying to protect her from religion all her life. She's taken to her church a few times, and that was... Um, fairly destructive. Well, her daughter saw the billboard and said, Mom, can we go there on Christmas? And I'd really like to talk to one of the ministers. So her mother called me to check us out to see if we were safe. They are coming Christmas Eve, and I am meeting with the daughter after Christmas. So that was worth the billboard all by itself, as far as I'm concerned. Um, 
Another story you might enjoy is I was asking the person I work with at MNC Saatchi how the team, the creative team, was taking its success. And she said, oh yeah, we're pretty chuffed. I said, well, what about the gal who, the young lady that came up with the idea in the first place? And she said, oh, she, um, she can't, she alternates between going, wow, to, oh no, what have I done? I said, well, how's she dealing with it today? Well, she's, I think she's happy, but she says she still hasn't told her mom. Now I'd like to uh, maybe invite some of you who'd like to either ask us questions or chew us out or express your experiences. You said then that um, you were playing with the um, billboard. What I'd like you to tell us is where you got the inspiration of the billboard. We know it had to be from God, but I want to know in human terms where you got that billboard from. You know, because it's, it's um, whether you say it's good or bad, it's outstanding. So, <laughs> thank you. Voice of God now. We give credit to this young lady at MNC Sachi uh, who came up with it as part of a creative team and that the concept is sent, to, they send me concepts and my favorite that I couldn't send to the vicar was one of a giant floral sperm coming down from heaven with the caption, joy to the world. Now, if you know the second line, you'll understand the humor. <laughs> there were a number of very safe Christmas card type of words. There were ideas that were presented. And we rejected those. We debated the sperm. Couldn't sell it. Uh, went back to them and said, try again. And they came back with this one. Uh, and I commend the vicar for his courage. Um, he's had to take most of the heat. I'm just the third behind the scenes. So, uh, he did great with that. Glenn and Clay have talked about support from around the world again. Right next door, uh, amongst some of the streets, there's been great support. It's really interesting listening to some of the conversations because we've been going loading trucks over the last couple of days and donating goods and whilst they've been loading they've been chatting about it and initially a little bit reluctantly because they said well what's the fuss it's it was a bloody good billboard and and then the person i think who had some hand in trying to stop somebody from taking a knife to it said you know they really shouldn't do that to church property <laughs> and, and, and he thought that was pretty appalling. Um, I don't know, I thought, I thought you know, yeah, that's pretty good. And as we continued to load the truck, the conversation actually got on to some other important things and uh, it just sort of died away, the conversation being had. Well, I believe God is love. And that's what I believe. God is love. And that love is hard in this church Everyone is welcome. As you say, welcome, welcome, welcome. And we have a creed here. Everyone is welcome. I used to be a science teacher. So, biology teacher. So personally, I cannot accept the virgin birth. But I know many of you do, many people do. But you are all welcome here. Thank you very much for the love that is here. Thank you. Thank you. From someone whose daughter was brought into this church 
29 years ago in my arms. I was talking to her on Skype yesterday and she was in absolute ecstasy. She has joined Facebook, St. Matthew's Facebook. For her, her church is still very much alive. She was very ecstatic because we were first on the BBC News. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I, I do want to say at this time that my wife and I have so enjoyed St. Matthew's. It has been a revelation to us from our experience of traditional Christianity in the U.S. and in particular the Presbyterian and Methodist churches uh, who might have wanted to do this sort of thing but had never done it. And I'm so proud that this church has done it. And uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, opened up a whole avenue of religious art Christian thinking uh, by our introduction to Bishop uh, Spall, a good friend of the person standing next to me. And uh, uh, that, that was a revelation, and I've read several books of his since that time. And uh, so I, I can say with the others, yes, I just spoke, I don't accept the Immaculate Conception truth, I don't believe in the virgin birth. Uh, all, all of these things have been impossible to say, you know, a few years back. But I'm very happy to be able to say them now. Okay, um, I'd like to comment on the courage that this has taken to do what you've done this week, with the enthusiasm and inspiration from others as well. And particularly the courage this morning about making the microphone open to who knows who. And what might yet come from those comments. <coughs> I think that illustrates what I believe is the core of St. Matthew's, the sense that things don't have to be as they are, the thing, sense that we need to challenge what's being said and think constructively about a new future that is not framed by what we necessarily experience today. And that's what that word courage stands for. So we think courageously, but we also act courageously. And you lead the way. Thank you. just told me to cut it up, but the Vicar's Warden is coming forward, so... <laughs> How fitting that we'll let you close up. <laughs> Which is a complicated task, actually. I was going to do this in the, the notice period, but this seems to be the more appropriate moment to do it. Um, for those of you who don't know, as Kay said, I'm the Vicar's Warden in this parish. And I just wanted to say, um, there's some people who need thank you. I'd like to thank um, Gino and Elspeth and Ian and Linda and Clay, who've been sitting downstairs watching billboards being defaced and wondering if someone was going to go in and, and do anything in the church. And I think that's been a really difficult time for them. And I think we should thank them for the courage they've shown this week as well. But particularly, I would like us to thank our vicar, because not just for the billboard, being persuaded as it were into this billboard, but for the way he has, I suppose, handled is the word, handled the media, the gracious way in which he has put forward a really model Christian attitude to those who agree and those who don't agree. And I think it's in that, um, for taking the, the sort of um, opposition of the religious authorities, for being willing to be in some form offensive, these seem to have good biblical traditions behind them. And I'd like us to see St. Matthews in that light as well and to thank him from all of us for this last week's work. Thank you, Claire. And I'd like to thank you and thank many other people. I'm aware we've just heard from people who feel rather positive towards the billboard, but I know there are a number of you and, and we had a much more wide-ranging conversation at 8 o'clock. And so I invite you to carry on that conversation it's it's fairly busy between now and Christmas, but later on, particularly sort of 
after the January break. Come and have a chat with us. Really happy to talk through these issues with you. I think one of the most heartening emails I got was actually from Rob Fife, the head of Air New Zealand, who, as you know, has been under a lot of media pressure himself. And he just said, you know, Tia Kahaka, carry on in there. I know what it's like being there. And I found that really moving. 